Welcome everybody to this session. We are about to find out why these students are so excited. We are going to jump in the new Seesaw features so you can get a demo. I want to let you know a little bit about me before we really get rolling. I'm Angela and I'm super excited to be here with you today. I taught kindergarten for 15 years and now lead the community team here at Seesaw to support all teachers getting started. So please connect with me on Twitter at Mrs. Gadkey. And in the bottom right here, you'll notice how you can get these slides if you are viewing the recording. For those of you joining live, I'm so excited that you are here. And I wanna let you know about something brand new that we are starting today. So we have always given certificates to people that come to our sessions live. They come to you via an email. But we've heard feedback that teachers really appreciate being able to view the recording. So starting today, August 13th, we are going to try um, giving certificates to those of you that are also viewing the recording. You just have to listen for a code that I'm going to share during this session. It's a six character code. I'll say, you know, three digits a little bit into the webinar and three digits later in the webinar. So all you have to know is that code to get your certificate in the form that you receive. Now, if you're live, you've got it easy breezy. The certificate's just coming to you. So you don't even have to worry about that. But let's jump in and talk about the newest Seesaw features. Keep in mind this session is really geared toward the teacher that is already using Seesaw. This is not going to be a basics where we're walking through the flow of getting started with Seesaw. You'll wanna join us for a different session for that information. But if you are brand new and wanna get inspired, this is a perfect place for you to be as well. So the first question people often ask is, how do I see these updates? So what you're going to wanna make sure you do is update your iOS devices. So if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you will need to go to the App Store to download the newest version of Seesaw. But if you're on a computer, this is so easy. You simply just go to app.seesaw.me and you are going to see the updates there automatically. So now that you know how to get the updates, I wanna just give a little bit of context to that Seesaw, as you know, has always been a platform to help students demonstrate and share what they're learning in school. And we want you to know that Seesaw's tools are the best for empowering students to think creatively and demonstrate their learning. And we have really been focused on how to make Seesaw better over the years. And this year, we're actually really focusing on three main areas. First, we want to be better than ever on Chromebooks. And we've really listened to our teachers and know that Chromebooks are used more and more in schools. And we want to make sure that Seesaw works amazing on Chromebooks. So we've actually rebuilt our tools from the ground up with Chromebooks in mind, while of course also making it easier for teachers using Google Classroom to take the learning further. So you will see that today. Um, these updates are also available on, you know, computers with a web browser and of course iPads and iOS as we've already shared. We also want to make sure in these new releases that we're still offering endless possibilities for students to create and reflect. So in response to feedback from upper elementary teachers, we've built new tools that support the types of content older learners produce and more complex expressive thinking, while of course keeping tools simple and easy to use for even our youngest learners. And again, the third, going into the third focus, is again, making sure our tools are intuitive for all learners. We really love how all students learn in different ways and created tools that give all learners more space, lots of options to choose how to demonstrate their learning in ways that work best for them. So we're excited to share the new Create screen with you. If you take a peek here, are you ready? Ready to see it? I'm really building up uh, the uh, the peak here. Here it is. So if you haven't been in Seesaw lately, it's gonna look a little bit different, right? So you're gonna recognize this screen 
kind of a similar screen that you've probably already seen with the tools, but we also wanted to refresh the screen to let our users know that big changes have arrived. So what we're actually going to do is if, for example, you look inside the drawing tool, you are going to see our amazing new drawing canvas. So what we've done is we wanted to make sure that all the tools were available for you on this screen, but you'll notice just giving you a quick tour up in the upper left, we have an undo and redo button. You know, we've always had text labels in Seesaw, but now you'll notice with that mic, you can draw and record to capture that learning process. So this was only available on iOS um, before and also on Android, but you can now do this on a Chromebook or via the web on any computer at app.seesaw.me. So drawing and recording at the same time is amazing. We can also now add a collage with multiple photos to your canvas via the camera photo tool right here. You can add shapes and backgrounds in Seesaw. You can also still on the bottom left caption with voice or text. And do you notice our amazing new expressive pens and tools down here. So we have a pencil, a pen, a highlighter, a glow pen, which is quite fun, and an eraser. So that gives you a little bit of a preview, but I wanna actually go into a live demo. So I'm gonna get out of the slides. I'm gonna go into one of my classes. I have so many of them. I'm gonna go into this fifth grade class, and I'm actually gonna show you what this looks like from the teacher perspective. Uh, of course, these tools are also available to your students. So as a teacher, when I tap this green add button, I am going to choose post to student journal. And here I am in our new uh, creative tools screen. So you can notice too, as I'm moving around here, it is, you know, bringing to life each of these different tools. So again, our new creative tools, no matter what you kind of go into, you're going to be able to experience them, but we're gonna to start today in the drawing, with the drawing tool. So let's click there. You'll notice here I am on my brand new gigantic canvas. You'll notice, um, if you remember on Chromebooks or via the web, it used to be just like this little tiny screen. And I'm gonna draw right here. Do you see how I can actually take advantage of every little aspect of this screen? It is enormous for your students. So students, no matter, you know, if they're on a Chromebook or the web <clears throat> and on iOS, they're gonna have all of this amazing space to work with to create and explain and demonstrate their learning. I'm gonna go in the upper left and hit undo because I want my clean canvas back. I also want to start this demonstration by telling a little bit of a story. Uh, my daughter, she just finished third grade. They were exploring angles. So they did a lot of hands-on learning. You know, They created angles with popsicle sticks and whatnot. But then one of the things that we were asked to do was to rock, walk around the classroom and find angles and take photos. So I thought oh, this is a perfect way to use the Seesaw creative tools. So what I'm gonna do actually to start is I'm gonna tap the three dots here on the bottom left and I'm gonna go into our new backgrounds tool and you'll notice we have some amazing new backgrounds. We've got plain colors, we've got some variegated colors. We also have different paper templates so I'm gonna actually click on this grid paper because I think that's going to come in handy with my math example that I'm about to work out. Um, so I went into my daughter's classroom. We took some photos, so I'm gonna go into the photo tool here. I can take photos directly from my camera, or in this case, I'm gonna upload photos because I've already taken them. So I'm gonna click upload. I am going to go here to download. And there are my amazing photos that I have taken of angles in my classroom. So you'll notice, super easy and quick, I have dropped three different photos onto the canvas, and I'm gonna start playing with them. Now I'm gonna pause for a moment and let those of you that are uh, watching the recording know 
the first three digits of the code that you will enter in order to get a certificate. Those first three digits you're going to want to write down are 640. All right, so back to our demo. I have these amazing pictures, right? So if I just added this to Seesaw as it is right now, my teacher could have an idea of what, you know, that I, I found some angles, right? But let's add another layer to really explain. So I'm gonna go here and use my photo tool and I'm gonna name these angles. I'm gonna call this obtuse. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm going to create another label. And what do we have? We have an acute angle. I think I'm gonna change the color on that one. And actually, let's see, we'll go, we'll try blue. Over here on colors, I'm just changing the color. I'm gonna move that here. You notice I can also just click these buttons quick too to change that if I want to. One more that I'm gonna do, you'll notice, did you see, did you see that nice little uh, effect that it kept the same label? So if I want to do that, I can. That's kind of handy, saves a little bit of time if you want them all the same. All right, and then we have my right angle. Okay, so again, I have a little bit more context for my teacher, right? But, hmm, let's see what else. What if I was able to draw and record and explain with my voice, which I want to do. But you know what? Before I do that, in the bottom, I'm going to grab this glow pen. I'm going to highlight this acute angle so it's really crisp and clear. I'm going to come over here to my obtuse angle. I'm going to highlight that. Now, you'll notice when I was just drawing, I'm using my trackpad. So one of the things that we notice with students on a Chromebook or maybe they're on a laptop, sometimes that's difficult. So if I go here on the three dots, I also have shapes. Now shapes are handy. You can see all the amazing shapes we have. We have common shapes. We also have common math manipulatives like pattern blocks, base 10 blocks. We even have some uh, musical annotations there for our music teachers, but I'm going to click on this line right here because that is going to actually come in handy for me. So I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to rotate it. Let's see if this helps me a little bit more easily be able to demonstrate this right angle. Again, because we saw, saw students and teachers uh, sometimes trying to draw some of these things out and you know it wasn't always easy if you're using a trackpad so we wanted to offer those shapes that's a little bit hard to see i'm going to change the color well let's see maybe purple let's do that okay so i think i'm ready now to record and really explain my thinking with our new drawing record option so i'm going to go ahead and tap the record button and let's get started When I walked around our classroom, I saw three different types of angles. First, I noticed an obtuse angle. And when you think of an obtuse angle, that means that this measurement right here is greater than 90 degrees. So that means it is an obtuse angle. Um, on the right, I found a chair in our classroom and I noticed this chair was demonstrating or showing me an acute angle. So when I think of an acute angle, that's less than 90 degrees. And a right angle is the last angle that I found. You'll notice right here on our shelf, uh, this right angle is exactly 90 degrees. And actually, if I go and I think of a shape, that I commonly see that has a right angle, I notice the square. So a square actually has four right angles, each equaling 90 degrees. So I can then tap the green check, as you notice in the right. I could also pause during that video if I wanted to as a student and move some things around or uh, change, change anything on the screen. Um, I'm gonna play this back right now. When I walked around our classroom, I saw three different types of angles. First, I noticed an obtuse angle. And when you think of an obtuse angle, that means that this... All right, I could re-record if I want right now without losing all of the work that I've done on the canvas. So that's also really handy. But I'm gonna actually check, check the green check here. 
um, and I'm going to choose my name and I'm going to get it added to our class. So as you can see, so many layers and creativity can take place with your students when they're using our new, all of our new tools. You know, they can add multiple photos, they can capture their learning in any format, they can draw and record to explain. So since I'm in the class right now, let's just peek at a couple other ideas that you might try. So here's an example of a student annotating and labeling various parts of a C star. This student is working out a math equation on top of this photo of a pyramid. Let's go down here. Again, this draw and record feature would be amazing for all of you math teachers out there too, who you know would love to get inside the head of your students to see maybe where they went wrong in solving a problem. Uh, here's an example of a student that is using our tools to really illustrate the various aspects of the sun in this diagram. Maybe you're doing a food pyramid. Maybe you're having your students tell about themselves or introduce themselves. What did they do over the summer? Lots of creation can happen there. Here's an example of a student annotating a text. So they are reading a book. They snapped a picture. They're using you know, lots of our drawing options here. Maybe they are explaining a more complex uh, thing like the water cycle. You'll notice here, uh, this student has actually taken the a photo and used that as a background image. So one of the things you can do is you can also layer the content that is coming on the screen as well, which is really handy. Uh, so those are just some ideas of how you can use our amazing new Seesaw features. I'm going to hop back into our slide deck because Early on, I mentioned to you that you can now import student rosters from Google Classroom. Woo! So those of you that are already using Google Classroom, make sure you're adding Seesaw into that workflow as well so students can take the learning a little bit further. So let's go ahead and click here to watch this in action. All right, so as you can see, we just watched that for about 20 seconds. So that's about as long as it would take you to create your class in Seesaw if you already have students rostered in Google Classroom. So make sure you check that out. And we are so excited to see how your students create, reflect, and Seesaw this year using our new creative tools. I want to let you know that, of course, you made it here, but if if you are going to join us again, all of our webinars are found at web.seesaw.me backslash PDS. That would be the place to go. And if you remember three things from today, Seesaw is better than ever on Chromebooks. We offer endless possibilities for students to create and reflect. And we have intuitive tools for all learners. So with that, I'm going to pause for a moment and give our viewers that are watching and recording the last three digits of the code they will need to get a certificate for viewing this session. The last three digits are 184. All right, so live viewers today, we are gonna hop into some questions right now. We love to hear your thoughts on the topic and really want to support you. So make sure you start typing those questions in. And I also wanna show you quickly too, that if you're not yet connected to our community, boy, we have teachers that are sharing ideas all over the place. So make sure you check that out. And of course we have more recordings on our YouTube channel as well. That's kind of where we post all of them after the session airs.